Just outside of Bluff, Utah, is a cluster of tanks, industrial buildings, and several large pools. This remote complex is a uranium mill. It's the last one of its kind in the country. For some, it's a necessary component of America's clean energy infrastructure. For others, like environmentalists and the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe's White Mesa community just down the road from the mill, it's a radioactive hazard. The United States has 15 uranium mills currently in operation. What sets the White Mesa mill apart is that it's the last conventional uranium mill still running. Other types of uranium mills are built on top of uranium deposits, and they recover the mineral by pumping chemicals into the ground and pulling the solution back up to the surface. In contrast, conventional uranium mills like this one chemically extract pure uranium from ore by putting ore that has been mined and transported to the mill through the mill. This leaves White Mesa as the only American uranium mill still accepting ore and other radioactive materials from around the country and the world. The mill, today owned by the company Energy Fuels, was projected to operate for just 15 years. When it opened, it was one of nearly two dozen conventional mills in the US. But the high uranium prices of the late 1970s fell throughout the 1980s. Demand for the mineral remained low in the following decades. Over the last two years, a global push for clean energy and Russia's invasion of Ukraine have rapidly increased demand for the yellow cake that the mill creates from uranium ore. Yellow cake undergoes more processing in other states to become powerful nuclear fuel. Just a soda can's worth could satisfy the average American's energy needs for their lifetime. The mill currently accepts uranium ore trucked from two mines, also owned by Energy Fuels, the LaSalle Mines Complex and the Pinion Plain Mine. White Mesa has also received uranium-bearing material from Estonia and Japan. Most of the uranium used by American nuclear reactors is imported. Over half of the uranium purchased by the U.S. in 2022 came from Canada and Kazakhstan, followed by sizable imports from Russia, Uzbekistan, and Australia. That means arguments for ramping up domestic uranium production in the U.S. are ridiculous, contends Sharon Squassoni. There is no getting away from buying foreign. Pulling pure uranium from the ore is the first step in developing nuclear fuel. After uranium ore and other materials arrive at the mill site, they're organized into separate piles to await processing. The first step in processing uranium ore is crushing it into a fine sand, which allows it to be more easily treated with chemicals. The crushed ore is then mixed with water from wells on the site. That mixture goes into giant vats containing sulfuric acid from the Kennecott Copper Mine near Salt Lake City, salt from the Great Salt Lake, kerosene, and ammonia. The chemicals leach pure uranium out of the ore and water solution, transforming it into a yellow dust. The dust is baked in large industrial ovens, and the final product is a dark, chunky powder composed of triuranium oxide, or U308, commonly called yellow cake. From crushing the ore to the final product takes about seven days. At that point, the first two steps of the nuclear fuel cycle, the mining and milling of uranium ore, have both taken place in Utah. Most of the yellow cake produced at this mill goes to a nuclear conversion facility in Illinois, also the only one of its kind in the US. There, it's converted into a gas called uranium hexafluoride, which is the next step in the nuclear fuel process. Through additional processing and other facilities, the gas is eventually converted into a powder, which is compressed into small pellets that are fed into a nuclear reactor. Finally, we're able to produce electricity. In nuclear reactors, uranium atoms split apart, generating heat. That heat makes steam, which then turns a turbine connected to a generator. And that process starts right here in Utah. In July, Energy Fuels trucked uranium ore from a mine it owns near the Grand Canyon to the White Mesa Mill. To make that trip, the trucks had to cross the Navajo Nation. Navajo Nation President Boo Nigren said that he hadn't been notified of the transport. He deployed tribal police to stop the trucks, but they had crossed the border into Utah before tribal law enforcement caught up with them. Nigren soon signed an executive order barring uranium transport on the reservation without the tribe's permission. Then, Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs brokered a deal between the tribe and Energy Fuels, in which the company agreed to temporarily pause uranium trucking across the reservation. The Navajo Nation has since strengthened its regulations for radioactive material transport. Executive Director of the Navajo Nation Environmental Protection Agency, Stephen Etsidi, said, Because of the price of uranium, we know that there are several other proposed mines that are in development. 
Energy Fuel says that uranium ore poses no adverse health or environmental effects, but Navajo officials aren't willing to take the risk, especially given the legacy of radioactive contamination on the tribe's people and land. Over 500 abandoned mining claims from the 1940s to the 1980s remain on Navajo Nation land. Federal and tribal testing found contamination from uranium and other radionuclides in water sources on the reservation as recently as 2008. Other supporters of nuclear power say that stringent regulations in the U.S. compared to other countries for protecting the environment, employees, and public health are another reason to bolster domestic uranium production. But environmental organizations like the Grand Canyon Trust object that the mill's processing of foreign radioactive material shifts the harm of radioactive waste from overseas to southeastern Utah. The White Mesa Mill sits just north of the White Mesa community of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe. For years, the people of White Mesa have raised concerns about the mill's impacts on their health and on their environment. The community sits downwind of the mill. Some members worry that they're breathing in toxic and radioactive particles from the mill. The mill is regulated by the Utah Division of Waste Management and Radiation Control, a state agency. That's significant because the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission usually oversees facilities like this, but Utah is an agreement state which means that it has assumed the commission's regulatory authority. Scott Clough has been studying the White Mesa Mill's impacts since 1996. He says the tribe's concerns start with how long uranium ore and other materials sit in piles outside the mill exposed to the elements before they're processed. Some materials shouldn't be exposed to the hot southeastern Utah sun, Clough said, and wind can blow potentially radioactive dust off of them. Energy Fuels says there is no set length for how long ore can stay on the ore pad and believes concerns related to the piles are unfounded. Energy Fuels also monitors air and groundwater at the mill site. There is zero scientific evidence to suggest that any of the mill's operations, including raw material storage, is causing any adverse health or environmental impacts, said Curtis Moore, a spokesperson for Energy Fuels. After Energy Fuels processes uranium, it stores the waste on site in containment ponds. The mill has processed radioactive material from around the world, leading the Grand Canyon Trust, an environmental nonprofit, to call it the world's radioactive waste dump. Environmentalists and White Mesa residents fear that the waste threatens local water supplies, air quality, and public health, and have raised concerns about the lining of waste containment ponds. Community members say that insufficient lining can lead to contaminated groundwater. Anthony Badback, who grew up and lives in White Mesa, told the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights in February that the mill has also affected his community spiritually. He said that the ancestors' remains buried in the area were desecrated when the mill was built and that he and his neighbors are wary of using spring water and vegetation for ceremonial purposes, fearing they're contaminated. We want the mill to shut down and properly be cleaned up. We want the mill and its contamination to be moved where it can't hurt any living things. Energy Fuels maintains that it follows all regulations and regularly monitors its containment ponds for leaks. The company also monitors air quality, soil, and groundwater for contamination. Rapid change in the global climate has driven a push for nuclear and other clean energy development, like solar and wind. Coal, oil, and natural gas emit greenhouse gases that warm the planet, and climate scientists say that pivoting away from those fuels is essential, as demand for energy is only growing worldwide. The many concerns about nuclear power, however, include the hazardous waste that remains. Spent uranium fuel is highly radioactive. Brief direct exposure can be deadly, and there is no facility available for permanent disposal of high-level waste, according to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Nuclear power plants are also complex and costly to build, leading to long construction timelines. Nuclear energy is a waste of time and money if you're seeking to mitigate the worst impacts of climate change as quickly as you can. Still, many scientists herald nuclear energy as a major player in slowing global warming and warn that continued opposition to nuclear power threatens humanity's ability to avoid dangerous climate change. Close said he agrees that clean nuclear energy could be useful in addressing the climate crisis but said the American Southwest was profoundly impacted by the last uranium boom in the 20th century. During the past two decades that White Mesa produced little yellow cake, the tribe worried about the environmental impacts of past uranium processing, he said. Now, Energy Fuels says it anticipates a large-scale uranium processing campaign at the mill into 2026. All of the environmental pollutants that we're concerned about during a mothball period are going to be amplified in the near future. 